Hello and welcome back to Competitive Crunch. My name is Spade and this is a show which is not quite bite-sized. Hence the crunch is more powerful and super effective. And today we are going to take a look at the Generation 6 Pokemon X and Y fully evolved Pokemon. And we are currently here on Pokemon Showdown uh, looking at the Limbo list. So we got all the fully evolved Pokemon on this list that have not been categorized yet by tiers because obviously Gen 6 just came out and it's gonna take a long time to actually make a tier so a lot of Pokemon at the moment are just uh, sitting in the limbo before they are actually put into their respective tiers and yeah that's gonna take a long long time so in the meanwhile we could uh, just take a quick look at the Pokemon which have the most potential which are not that good so I'm just gonna you know give my quick thoughts I will still keep doing the MPX editions and look at the specific Pokemon, but I thought it would be kind of nice to see uh, which fully evolved Pokemon we have in Pokemon X and Y, the new ones, and see like which one of them are you know good, which are which of them are not that good, and just kind of discuss. I will give my quick thoughts. You can uh, reply in the comments below. That of course, you, if you have uh, integrated your account with Google Plus, seriously, Google, why why you do this? Uh, but that's a story for another day. It would be a good story, but then again, everybody has talked about that and yeah, nobody likes it. But we move on because different topic today, fully evolved Pokemon of Generation 6. And actually, if we scroll back here, uh, we can see Zygarde is already put down to the OU tier alongside with all the other OU Pokemon that are currently in the X and Y OU. I don't really know how this actually works out. All I know is that the other two... Tidal Legendary Pokemon, Eveltal and Xerneas have been put to Ubers because when you look at their stats, they are kind of incredibly powerful. But uh, when you look at Zygarde, it has only base 100 attack and 95 speed and 81 special attack. So it's not really an offensive behemoth or anything like that. It does have some nice boosting moves in the form of Dragon Dance and Coil and some nice moves that go well with with its uh, typing uh, such as earthquake and outrage and extreme speed for priority priority but still you know its offenses are you know kind of mediocre uh, so and as we learned from the past generation you know kiram did just fine in the ou tier in fact it was just bl although there were the two forms which are a complete completely different story but still offensively speaking you know there are a lot of better OU Pokemon that have better offensive capabilities and can just kind of destroy everything. So I think at least for the time being, this Pokemon is going to be just fine in the OU tier. And then looking at the actual Limbo, going in the alphabetical order, we got Aegislash here. And um, yeah, I talked about that more last time in the MPX edition. Uh, so nothing more to really add, but Aegislash is definitely a unique Pokemon with its uh, stance change ability and it does have a really good OU potential. In fact, it's a solid OU Pokemon already and it's gonna continue to be so. And then we got Aramatis here, which has really good bulk, does have some good support moves, but I think the potential that this Pokemon has is in the doubles, because with the Aroma Veil, you cannot prevent it from being taunted because that's what the Aroma Veil does. You cannot taunt this Pokemon, and also I believe it applies for Torment, but I think the taunt is the main attraction there. But on the singles, I don't think this is going to be a high tier Pokemon, or a top tier Pokemon, excuse me. But uh, I think in the doubles, this thing has more potential. Setting up Trick Room, Dual Screens, Aromatherapy for that kind of support, and things like that. Because it can't be taunted, and it's going to be a good team player over there. Decent in the singles, but yeah, better in the doubles. So move on. Uh, we got Aurorus, which has some good bulk, but then horrible defensive typing. Four times weak to fighting, and there are fighting types like everywhere. Although fairy types kind of compensate for them with their new resistance and everything. But still, you know, defensively not really a great typing and uh, it does have the snow warning ability but with the fact that uh, hail and all the weather has got nerfed this gen I don't think you know hail is gonna see hail's gonna see even less use than in the previous generation that's for sure 
And then we got Avalog, and that's another bulky ice type, at least on the physical side. 184 defense, but then its special defense is 46, so it kind of gets destroyed by any special attack, pretty much. So that kind of sucks for it, and you know, Ice is never really that great of a defensive typing. It does have pretty good uh, physical attack, but I'm not really sure about its move pool, and especially with the 28 base, base speed, it's not really gonna be doing any kind of sweeping. I guess Choice Band would be decent on it, but not gonna be a top tier Pokemon, and it can't really abuse the Ice Body ability uh, either, cause, you know, Hail got nerfed, there's no perma hail anymore so that kind of sucks for it but um yeah not really a top tier pokemon but um might be a this kind of like a reverse uh cryogonal so it might be a pretty good um uh, defensive pokemon in the lower tiers i would say and then we got barbarical which is another shell smash user so that's gonna give some uh competition potentially to our good old cloister and uh, this thing definitely has, I'd say, better coverage in a sense uh, than Cloyster because it does have access to fighting type moves such as um, Cross Chop and that also gets boosted by its ability Tough Claws as does the Razor Claw which uh, Barbarical has access to. Then you uh, complete the coverage with uh, Stone Edge and uh, you have a pretty solid sweeper in your hands and um, we'll see. It might give some competition for uh, uh, for the cloister for sure. It's a tad bit uh, slower, but it should should still have you know it, it still kind of has better coverage when you have that uh, rock fighting coverage and then also another water type move and you have the tough claws giving it a nice little boost for razor claw and the um, uh, cross chop. So definitely a solid um, sweeper. We'll see if it's gonna uh, be cloister. And then we move on to Gar Carbink, uh, which is a rock fairy type, which has no, which has basically non-existing offensive potential, but it does have solid defense and special defense in 150. But you know it cannot really retaliate, so once you taunt this thing, it's pretty much shut down and it can't really do anything. But uh, at this moment, there are not too many stealth rock users, so I've been actually seeing this thing. Uh, a few times, you know, setting up rocks and dual screens, but outside of those moves, like, it doesn't really get much else, and it doesn't have a re reliable recovery move, so that kind of hurts it on the defensive side, but uh, at least at the, at, the, at the moment when we don't have Pokemon Bank, you could use this thing as a Stealth Rocker, the very least, and uh, somewhat of a Dragon uh, Slayer, I guess, or at least take some Dragon-type moves with the Fairy typing, I guess, although Dragons usually carry Earthquakes, so yeah, not really a top tier Pokemon, I, I, I would say. Then we got Chestnut here, and uh, that's an interesting Pokemon. Uh, it does have some utility moves, it's quite bulky, and has those utility, utility moves such as Spikes and Lead Seed, but I think Ferrothorn performs this role much better. Now, it does have Bulletproof ability, which makes it a decent um, check to uh, Gengar. Because a lot of people are running Sludge Bomb, but eventually if people are going to be using Bulletproof Chestnut, then people will just switch that uh, Gengar's Sludge Bomb into Sludge Wave and just destroy Chestnut. And the fact that uh, it's kind of outclassed by uh, Ferrothorn means that uh, this thing will be in the lower tiers. But uh, interesting Spike Supporter, definitely in the lower tiers, I would say. Not sure if this is going to be like in the UU U, U and or RU, but it's kind of diff difficult to say at this point. But I wouldn't consider this a top tier OU Pokemon. And then we got Clawbitzer, and that's one of the Mega Launcher Pokemon alongside with Mega Blastoise, I guess. But in that sense, I think it's uh, I think Mega Blastoise is the better choice. And this thing is kind of just slow. It does have high special attack alongside with its ability and the move pool, but it's just so slow that I think there are better water type sweepers, special attackers to go with than uh, Clovitzer, for sure. So I think this is gonna be a lower tier Pokemon and not top tier OU. And then we got Deden, and uh, not really much to say about this thing. It's the generation six Pikachu. You're gonna have that cute 
electric type uh, road in Pokemon every generation and this is it. It does have the fairy typing but like yay it's still a generation 6 Pikachu so not much else to say about it. It's relatively fast and has decent special attack but that's about it. No, I don't think it gets any super awesome moves anyway so I don't know Gen 6 Pikachu we move on. Uh, then we got Delphox, and this Pokemon is definitely gonna face some competition from Victini once we uh, get access to it uh, through the Pokemon Bank, because it has the same typing. Now it is faster than the Victini and has higher special attack, but Victini is gonna be more versatile because it can go physical or special. Uh, so I would I, I would consider this thing being like I don't know a lower tier Pokemon. So. If Victini is gonna be like you, you, who knows how we, well Victini is gonna perform in this meta game? Is it gonna be in the OU tier? Uh, not sure. There's no Perma Sun either, so this could actually mean that Delphox is, you know, gonna be being on the tier below Victini because Victini is just simply more versatile. And this thing, because Delphox, it really cannot use its physical physical attack because it's 69. Oh, lol, lol, lol. And Victini can use that, and uh, it has on that aspect more options to do, uh, do deal with, and uh, you know it is more unpredictable because it can go physical or special, and that's something that uh, Delphox really can't do. But still a solid uh, special sweeper and has some potential, but not a top tier Pokemon, I'd say. Then we got Diggersby, and uh, that's another huge power user. Um, now I don't know about this Pokemon's how well. Of, could it do in the OU tier? I think its coverage is kind of limited. It's kind of gimmicky Pokemon, normal ground type. But with the huge power, it's going to be hitting really hard. I think it has access to agility at least, so it could be boosting up with that. And then you got normal type like return and then EQ for your coverage move and then I guess a filler move. But I could see this Pokemon being like a solid um, choice band user in the UU tier, especially now with Azumarill gaining all the... Um, attention with the fairy typing and stuff like that so yeah uh, moving on we got Dragalge which has the unique uh, poison dragon typing with adaptability but its stats are like just kind of mediocre so I am kind of looking at this Pokemon as a lower lower tier dragon especially with its speed it's not gonna be doing any sweeping and it does have decent special defense but then again, it doesn't have reliable recovery, so as far as I know, maybe it will get one in the future. But um, then again, if you want to be looking at a specially defensive dragon, you got Gudra, so there is that. Now, Fuller Gaze, that thing has a solid 154 special defense, so this could be a definitely a solid uh, special wall. And uh, it, it has been seen quite a bit in the OU tier 2, but I don't know. Um, like I, I, uh, I guess like it can be a good supporter because it does have access to Wish and Aromatherapy, and um, then I guess you can do some uh, Toxic Stalling with that too. So it's kind of like a decent Fairy type uh, wanna be Blissey in that sense. Uh, it does have like I guess okay defense too, but uh, offensively speaking. Like it's not really the greatest thing. It, want, it does have that 112 special attack, which is really good. So it means that it's not a complete setup bait, at least, and it can retaliate with the uh, decently powerful uh, Moon Blast, for example. I guess it could do some calm mind sweeping, but 75 base speed uh, means that it's best off doing some support rolls. But it's definitely a really solid, specially defensive Pokemon, and I'd say it has even decent OU potential at, at this point. Then we move on to Furfrau, which has the Fur Coat ability, which means that uh, physical contact moves uh, basically do half the damage to this Pokemon. But yeah, it's a normal type dog, doesn't have the greatest move pull, so probably, I don't know if there's gonna be an NU Pokemon, but a uh, lower tier Pokemon. For sure, like it could have some gimmicky uses with the fur coat ability, but still outside of that, it's not, it's not really that great. Then we got Go Goat, and um, 
I, I, I guess, I don't know, it has high HP and, uh, but outside of that, like only decent defenses. So I, I'd say this is going to be a, another lower tier, you no know, bulky grass type, perhaps in the RU or something like that. I don't know, but I don't really see too much uh, competitive potential in go go it can't really do any sweeping with the 68 base speed either and offensively like it can do something but it's not going to be do doing any sweeping and uh, it's not really the bulkiest thing of all time either so there we go and moving on to gudra uh, i was talking about this earlier when comparing to drag Elge. but this is a specially defensive dragon that has a great move pull but it's Gudra is a really interesting Pokemon because it's a specially defensive dragon but so you would see it used as a specially defensive wall but then it doesn't really have any good um, um, support moves to go with it doesn't have re reliable recovery either and yeah just the lack of good support moves like you can do something with, with like protect and toxic but like that's really your best options but it does have like great move pull when it comes to attacks on the physical and on the special side you got fire blast thunderbolt dragon pulse sludge bomb uh, muddy water uh, ice beam all you got the ball beam all sorts of great coverage moves so it can it's gonna be kind of hard to counter on that sense because it, because it carries this uh, great special move side and you know on the mo physical move pull too you got like outrage and eq and uh Stuff like that, but it could be definitely a hard hitting uh, mixed. Uh, um, I, I guess like a hard hitting mixed attacking special wall that is gonna be like it's gonna be taking hits and it's gonna be retaliating really hard. But it's in in in, in a way I kind of see wasted potential because there are just Pokemon that can do its job much better. There are special special sweepers that have uh, great. You know, special attacking move pool, like let's say Genesect. And uh, then you got special walls such as Blissey that actually have recovery moves. So, Gura has a lot of things going on, but there are just things that perform its roles better. But it's still a solid special wall that uh, is gonna be able to retaliate back really hard. So, that is where Gura's potential really lies. But um, I could definitely see this thing sticking in the OU tier. At least for the time being. Then we got the Gur guys Pokemon. There are different different forms in the sizes, and they got different different uh, base stats. Uh, I, I haven't even really checked, but um, I think this uh, super sized one is the is it the bulkiest one? No, they all have equal defenses, but it, this one has the highest uh, HP. So you could kind of see this thing as. Um, I don't know, defensive wall, but then again, we have the other ghost uh, grass type. I, I think that one is kind of the better one, and I would kind of see this thing dropping down to the lower tiers. Uh, that is my personal opinion, and I will talk about more about the other one when we get to it uh, later on. Uh, but then we got Greninja, and uh, this is the most used uh, starter Pokemon of the new starters for now. And it has pretty solid uh, base speed of 122 and 103 special attack. Its physical attack is not that great. It does have that unique uh, signature move of uh, Water Shuriken, but I think its special move is still the better one. And it does have the uh, awesome ability of Protein, and it changes into the type of a move that it's going to be using, which means it basically gains Stab from every move it uses and that is what makes uh, Greninja stand out from the rest of the Pokemon and uh, it's a solid special attacker that gains stab from everything and that is enough to uh, gain it a lot of uh, usage. Uh, not sure if it's gonna, gonna be sticking in the OU tier once we get access to all the other fast special sweeping Pokemon such as let's say Keldeo for example. But uh, at least for the time being, it's a really solid Pokemon and uh, perhaps this Protein ability is gonna uh, make the difference and uh, gain the usage for Greninja in the OU tier. Then we got uh, Hawlucha, which has really high speed, 118, but only pretty mediocre 92 attack. And uh, I think still, still the physical Mopul is the way to go with this Pokemon. 
but uh, who knows if the flying gem is gonna get even released at this point so you could be using the flying gem acrobatic set uh, and uh, I guess with sword dance this Pokemon will make into a decent sweeper and also this Pokemon has access to that unique a dual type move of uh, flying press Sounds really good on paper, it's dual uh, fighting flying type, which is really good for neutral coverage, but still you're pretty much better off with having separate flying and uh, fighting type moves to um, hit all the uh, Pokemon, you know, having the better coverage that way pretty much. It has really situational uses, but uh, I see this Pokemon kind of as a lower tier Pokemon, and who knows about the flying gem at this point, so that is a thing. Then we got Heliolisk, uh, which is... A really good special uh, sweeper, definitely. Uh, unique normal and uh, electric typing, which has it uh, uses, and this thing has really nice abilities in dry skin, sand whale, and solar power, which all go with the different kinds of uh, uh, weather inducing abilities. Although, then again, they got nerfed this gen, but uh, still, uh, you could be using this thing in the sun for a little extra buff. And in the in the rain, I think dry skin is the most useful ability because that means it can be switching into uh, water type attacks for free and just uh, gaining some HP. So uh, on that aspect, it's uh, it's a really nice ability. And uh, coupled with its stats, you could be using this thing as a solid uh, scarfer or a specs user with Volt Switch and Thunderbolt. You got Focus Blast and even Surf, and then you have Grass Knots and I think some other coverage moves like I guess hidden power would be a solid to uh, slice a slot for but um, uh, still I don't know is it gonna be a top tier OU Pokemon I kind of see this thing still kind of as a lower tier perhaps like a solid uh, UU um, momentum gainer special attacker hard hitting Pokemon hit and run pretty much um, so that is my quick thoughts although on all of these Pokemon, I do need to look more deeply into them, but we move on for the sake of this video. So next we got Klefki, and uh, it has really good Steel Fairy typing, which is basically the new Steel Psychic, because you got only weakness to uh, fire and ground. So it's a solid defensive typing, you got pretty decent bulk, and you got the Prankster ability with the solid, solid uh, support moves such as... Uh, Thunder Wave to slow down some sweepers, guaranteed if you bring this thing in uh, safely. Then you got priority spikes, priority uh, dual screens, and you can retaliate with uh, foul play. That is what people seem to do the most because everybody's running A slash, so you have this thing supporting your team and then also to take care of A slash, at least at this time. So that's the thing. It has some really good potential. We'll see if it's gonna be sticking out in the OU tier in the long future. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely good typing and uh, could be kind of could be also used as a suicide lead uh, spiker But uh, then again default did get buffed this gen. So there's that but uh, really good defensive typing and uh, Some great moves to go with the prankster ability and uh, Then we got Malamar and that is mostly seen as a contrary user and um, you got the superpower uh, that can raise your attack and defense and uh, then you cover that with some uh, dark type stab moves and uh, perhaps does it get like psycho cuts? I'm not really sure But uh, this is a, also an interesting Pokemon scene to take on Aegislash also with the topsy-turvy But I'm not really sure if it's gonna be a top OU tier Pokemon because its uh, stats are kind of mediocre and it's still kind of a gimmick of a Pokemon so I would see this Pokemon kind of being a uh, gimmick used in the uh, lower tiers and then we got Meow stick both of its forms I think the other one is a bit more bulky or how does it go? Right here we got the same base stats. I don't know if they are any different I thought the other one was like more defensive or something, but I think you know, it's pure psychic type There are just a lot of pure psychic types. There's Alakazam for example and I don't really see much potential in either one of them. Even if one of them is more bulkier, you know, psychic type is not the best bulky type. And, you know, we got Deoxys defense that you can use at this time too. Especially when the Pokemon Bank comes out. So, yeah, don't really see too much potential in this thing. Yeah, both of them are going to be lower tier Pokemon for sure. And then we got Noivern. And uh, that is definitely an interesting Pokemon. Like, if we compare it to like something like Hydreigon, 
This thing is faster than High Dragon, but has lower special attack. But it does have the Infiltrator ability, which means it can hit your op uh, opponent uh, through subs. It basically it ignores substitutes, and it does have some really solid moves such as Reiko Meteor, Hurricane, uh, it probably gets Dragon Pulse 2, and then some... What other coverage moves? I haven't really seen this thing, like... I haven't faced them too much, but usually when I do, they are always spamming Hurricane and Draco Meteor, but together those are really strong moves even though they were nerfed in this generation, but um, definitely a fast Pokemon that can revenge kill through substitutes, so that's definitely going to uh, give it some use, and uh, at least for the time being it's going to be a really good OU tier Pokemon. And then we got Pangoro, and this is a Pokemon that on pretty much all the trailers it, ha it has come out and then gotten destroyed, and uh, it does have like um, high attack, but it's kind of like a fighting dark type um, Ursaring. It has high attack, and that is pretty much it. It does have Scrappy, so that's kind of useful, but uh, it kind of gets destroyed by the fairy types, and uh, it doesn't have any sweeping, sweeping Pokemon. I think the best set you can run on this thing is in the lower tiers. Um, you can have this as a choice band user, and with the Scrappy you can hit ghost types with the fighting type moves, so that is kind of cool. And you also got the Iron Fist and the Mole Breaker, so pretty pretty nice abilities, but uh, yeah, coupled with the speed, you know, it's gonna be a lower tier Pokemon. Yeah, and then we got a Pyroar right here, and um, this thing is pretty fast, has high special attack, but then like... Why does it have Moxie if its attack is only 68? That kind of sucks for it. Uh, but on the special attacking side, I'm not sure, does it actually have access to Thunderbolt? I believe so. So it does have some, like, decent uh, potential on the special attacking side. You can use something like Hyper Voice. Does it get that? I believe so. And then, like, Fire Blast and Thunderbolt and stuff like that. But it's kind of just a mediocre... Fire type Pokemon, and I'd say there are some better ones for sure. I guess it works as an interesting check for uh, um, what you might call it the um, Ghost Fire type Chandelure because it does resist its uh, dual stab and it's actually immune to Ghost and it does resist fire, but uh, kind of a mediocre fire type. And normal type doesn't really add too much. And I like the best move it can get for as far as boosting comes is like the uh, cheer up. So, yeah, mediocre fire type. Then we got Slurpuff, and it has the Sweet Veil ability, which, um, uh, this one prevented you, yeah, this one prevents the Pokemon from being put to sleep. But much like with the Aromatist, I think this is gonna see more use in the double scene as a support Pokemon, because everybody is still most likely going to be running Spore, Among Us and Breloom and stuff like that, so uh, this Pokemon can prevent you and your teammate from being put to sleep, uh, but in the singles, like, I don't really see this thing having too much potential. It ha does have some pretty good bulk, but, you know, when it comes to sweeping, like, it's not too fast, like, I guess you could be running something with the Unburden ability, but still it doesn't have the best uh, special attack or the attack, so... I think it's best off in the doubles as a supporter Pokemon. And uh, then we got Sylveon. Uh, this, I think this is going to be facing some comp uh, competition from the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the Florgaze, which is another bul especially bulky um, fairy type Pokemon that can also provide some support with the uh, Wish. And um, I think this is going to be another uh, pretty decent uh, Wish supporting Pokemon. It does have pretty high attack. Uh, high HP, I mean, and uh, high special attack, so it can actually retaliate, not be a complete setup for it. But its speed is kind of mediocre, and if we actually take a look back at the where was the floor gaze, uh, it does have higher HP, so it can pass some higher HP wishes. So these two Pokemon are definitely going to be facing some competition, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, which one one of these is going to be dropping down to the lower tier and which is uh, going to be staying up. But uh, I think both, both of them have some uh, decent potential being in the um, in the OU tier to at least take on some uh, special attacking uh, dragons like uh, Latios for sure whenever we have access to that. Because it's immune to dragon and stuff like that. And uh, higher wishes than... Uh, 
Higher wishes than the uh, Florgaze is definitely something that sets this Pokemon apart from the Florgaze. And then we got Talonflame. I pretty much already talked about this in a separate video in the MPX edition of Talonflame. But priority, Gale Wings, Acrobatics and um, uh, Bray Birds and Roost is what this Pokemon has going on for itself. And that is why you should consider it for the team. But the most powerful priority in the entire game is pretty nice, especially coupled with uh, Swords Dance. But now at this time, nobody knows if the um, if the gems or the uh, the other gems are gonna get released at any point. So that kind of sucks. And I believe Smogon al already confirmed that normal gem only gives you 1.3 times the boost instead of 1.5. So that kind of sucks. But still, Flying Gem Acrobatics uh, Talon Flame would be really nice. But still, you know, Priority Brave Bird is still a really nice attack that it has going on and even acrobatics without any kind of item is still a really nice without any um, any kind of setback recoil 110 base power it's still a really nice move so at least at this time it is used a lot and it's a really nice Pokemon with Gale Wings so then we got Trevenant and this was the other ghost uh, grass type I was uh, talking about earlier compared to the uh, Gourgeist and this Pokemon, like, I've faced this thing a few times and it's really... I, 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 this is just such a unique Pokemon because the set that I've seen most and the set I started running myself because it was just so cool is Harvest and Citrus Berry coupled with the moves Substitute and uh, Lead Seed and Curse. Because you can just sub down on the switch and then go for the Curse, activate your Citrus Berry again, one fourth of your health back go for the lead seed and be a complete annoying nuisance and then you can have a filler move such as a uh, will o wisp or uh, shadow claw for an attacking move it actually has pretty decent 110 attack so you could be using that but uh, this thing is definitely a nuisance and the couple with the harvest ability it's gonna it's a really solid pokemon and uh, at least at this time it's a solid spin blocker because we don't really have access to uh, too many um uh, too many uh, default users at this time because we don't have Pokemon back yet So people are using this Pokemon as a solid uh, spin blocker Especially for Excadrill because this thing can kind of take most of its uh, Hits and then just retaliate back with Will-O-Wisp or sub down or lead seed stall it and stuff like that. So uh, Yeah, definitely a solid spin blocker at least at this time and uh, it has some potential in the harvest citrus berry set It's really a unique set has that uh only Trevenant is able to pull off and uh, something that I'm definitely interested in trying out more. And in fact, I'm going to be doing some showdown and uh, potentially using this Pokemon because it is it's just so unique. No other Pokemon can pull off this set and uh, it's just so fun yet <laughs> extremely annoying at the same time. But uh, yeah, something really unique. And um, Ghost, Gra Ghost Grass type is pretty decent. Defensive definitely a unique typing and uh, Yeah, the spin blocking at this time is the highest potential that Tremenant has But then we got a couple more going on here. We got uh, Tyrandrum and um, uh, Basically it has really high attack, but kind of mediocre speed so that kind of sucks for it but the uh, 121 base attack coupled with the rock head uh, head smash is gonna be hitting like a truck and you don't have any have any downsides to it, so that is the greatest potential that this Pokemon has. So the choice band and the choice um, scarf sets, I believe, are gonna be the most popular ones, coupled with, I guess, Rock Polish 2. It could be running those uh, biting moves and uh, elemental fangs with the strong jaw as well, but I still think the Rock Head, uh, head Smash is the um, biggest appeal when it comes to using. Tyrandrum because it pretty much outpowers all the other coverage moves it has because so much power What is it still 150 base power with no recoil stab 121 attack? That thing hit, hits like a truck, but I kind of still see this thing as lower tier Pokemon because of its speed. It's still Just so mediocre, but uh rock dragon typing is really unique I don't think any other Pokemon besides Tyrandrum and its pre-evolution get it so pretty nice offensive coverage right there, but uh, mediocre speed, so that's gonna kind of hurt it. And then we got the uh, Pokemon 666, which is a uh, Vivalon, and uh, you know, it's the generic butterfly Pokemon. 
Uh, but uh, it does, I don't know, compared to Battle 3, it's kind of the same thing. It can run Compound Ice with um, with Quiver Dance and Bug Boss, but it does get Hurricane, so that's pretty cool. And it also has this unique move called Powder, which is like weird, and it makes the Pokemon that are about to use a Fire-type move explode and lose like one-fourth of their HP. And um, I, it, it's... I think it also gets priority, but I think the best move, move pool you can move set you can really run on this thing is like Hurricane, Bug Buzz, coupled with uh, Sleep Powder and the uh, Quiver Dance, because you can put things to sleep, you can Quiver Dance, and uh, then just hit powerful Hurricanes, uh, coupled with the uh, Compound Ice, and the Sleep Powders also get boosted by the Compound Ice, though, so it's gonna be hit hitting more of the time, so that's the only thing. You really have going on with the Vivillon, but it's still gonna be a lower tier Pokemon because it's, it's kind of this weak generic butterfly Pokemon at the beginning of the Pokedex. I think it's, it's a bit more powerful than butterfly, although I cannot be really certain, but yeah, still gonna be a lower tier Pokemon. But with that being said, we're going around 36 minutes, so I'm gonna be calling this an episode. And um, yeah, this was my just quick glimpse at all the Pokemon that you have access to. So when you make a team, when you're thinking about what uh, Generation 6 Pokemon do I have access to, uh, these are really your best bets here. And um, this gen, you, we only got like 69 Pokemon, although there are still some unreleased stuff that's gonna get released in the future. But at this time we got 69 Pokemon and these are the fully evolved ones that uh, we have access to. and. Uh, yeah, these were my thoughts. Leave yours in the comment section below. And uh, I will check you guys more in the future with competitive crunch. So until next time, this is the Flaming Spade signing out. Peace.